Good morning, this is Mike Yonkman, Chief Investment Officer for Anchor Star Wealth, giving you a weekend update. Gonna cover what the market's done the last two weeks. I'm gonna talk about holding stocks overnight, where the value happens, uh, kind of almost a, a trading, like why do I stay in the market all the time? And then I'm gonna talk about um, possible impacts to, I guess it's called Sheen and Timu, um, on tariffs or at least charging for Chinese goods. But before I get started, I must remind you this is a financial education presentation. You must do your own due diligence on anything that you hear in this presentation. More disclaimer information can be found on anchorstarwealth.com and the opinions expressed are mine and mine alone. So let me share my screen and look at this headline. The S&P tumbles Friday to the worst week since 2023. Horrible, horrible news. If you saw my presentation last weekend, this was from last weekend. So this was last Friday's headline, September 6th, and it made it sound doom and gloom. Uh, man, I should get out of the stock market. I should probably go uh, put a mortgage on my house. I should, uh, you know, get ready because things are bad. You know, it's the worst weekly performance. Let me show you how this one ended. Here's the end of this week's S&P 500 and NASDAQ rally Friday to cap the best week in 2024. So, you know, you much prefer to see this headline and so would I. So let's look at uh, the S&P 500 and I'm gonna share a graph that shows you um, kind of, this, this is a, right here is the two week period. Down, and then right back up and you can see it's pretty close to the same place it was uh, two weeks ago. So panic averted. And then once again, I'll always zoom back. Let's look at the year to date, eh, pretty up. And when you look at like a five year graph, it looks, you know, all those down weeks that are the worst are kind of closed out. You can see the overall upward and that's the S&P 500. Let me show you the NASDAQ. The S&P is almost to an all-time high again. Uh, as far as the NASDAQ, here's the two-week period. You can see down and then back up again. As far as the year-to-date, same thing, although it hasn't recovered its all-time high from July 10th. And that's probably due to some rotation to things beyond the uh, top 10 stocks. And then the five-year graph, very similar to the S&P 500. So, I'll just say that you probably don't want to look at things that, you know, every single day, every week. You can certainly, you can if you'd like, but, you know, some of those are just news, uh, trying to get you to click on things, trying to put panic, you know, saying, saying that the weather is normal every single day is pretty boring. You wouldn't watch the weather channel. Saying the stock market is just continuing its track upward very slowly is kind of boring. So uh, they definitely highlight those. Um, one question that I get occasionally has to do with, um, you know, should I hold stocks during the day versus the night? Like, or really, it's should I hold them overnight? Is there a lot of risk overnight? And I found a couple articles to talk about this because uh, you know, there's, you know, we're, we're buy and hold for a while, but we will make changes within a portfolio. Um, some people are buy in 1970 and hold forever, which is a, is a better strategy than being out of the market. And then there's there's people out there that, that are day trade. I mean, they'll be in and out of stocks during the day. Um, and I, I mean, I'm sure there's people out there that know what they're doing, but but the question is, why wouldn't we do that? Why, why wouldn't we be in and out like that? So a couple things. Most trading happens during the stock day as far as any change of possession of ownership. And here's a graph that shows you this is the volume of when things transfer with stocks. You can see that the orange, that is the 9.30 to 4 o'clock Eastern time. That's the trading window when most things happen. And there's also a surge at the beginning. You can see that the thing goes up high at the beginning and there's a surge at the end. So there's even, uh, you know, it's kind of uh, on those edges. It looks like a, like a bowl almost. And then you see the blue is after hours trading. And you can see there's a little bit of after hours trading before the market and a little bit after. And, you know, so 
we deal in that window, that orange window, and most obviously most people do. When you get into the after hours, much few buyer or less buyers and sellers, which means you get a lot of price volatility. So let me continue on in this. So if they look at a model and they said, hey, what happens if I only own stocks during the day? And then I sold at four o'clock and then the next morning I got back in at 930 and then I sold at four o'clock. So every night I can go to bed and say all my money's in cash and I can sleep well. And we certainly always want people to sleep well. What they found is that if you did that, if you just own stocks during the day, over 30 years, your portfolio would only be up 12%. So that means barely up in 30 years, you'd be very unhappy with that. But if you buy and hold, or if you only own stocks overnight, which obviously you know, is the other side of it, it's up 20 fold, 20 times your money on an S&P 500. So the question is, why is that? I mean, this is the data. And this, this would say to just old, own stocks during the day would be you know, not worth doing. And here's a graph that kind of shows you the orange line is if you just owned them during the day. And you can see that it, it's actually improved a little bit. But then you can see the, the overall, the blue line, the strategy is of just holding them all the time. So I'll continue down and, and just say that, you know, why is that? So there's a couple things. One is um, stocks, and, and I'll see, you'll see this on another chart, but stocks release earnings either before the market opens or after, mar after the market closes. And that's when the stocks move. That's when a lot of times, like if Apple comes out and they say, we blew out earnings, the stock jumps, you know, 5% now, but it probably used to be 20% and used to get bigger moves. Um, or, you know, the other side is if they have, have bad news, then it goes down. But generally, what I see is it's like 70%, 75% of earnings are beat as far as the goals. So generally, it's good news. Now, the other thing that happens in, in, in the evening is, you know, you can have geopolitical unknown events. And now, of course, that can happen anytime. I mean, it can happen during the day, too. But, um, you know, so that could cause things to go down. Um, let me see here. So I want to show this graph here. And what this is says that while that's true over 30 years, it's becoming less true now. And that may surprise you. Um, you can see back in the uh, the early 90s, the blue is you know overnight performance, how stocks did overnight, and as far as that they outperformed by year. And the orange is when intraday outperforms overnight holding. And you can see the blue is heavy at the beginning, and it gets to be more 50/50, I would say, lately. And there's a couple reasons for that. Uh, is generally when the the uh, Fed comes out with news or things to calm the economy, believe it or not, they do it during the day. They do it during the stock trading day. So that typically benefits the stocks, right? I mean, they, they, they generally come out with things that make the market go up. Like, hey, we're going to lower the interest rates. Maybe that happens this next Wednesday. So uh, that was one thing I wanted to share. And then the other side of this is you know, let's talk about, let's call it, call it day trading. That means you're in and out stocks during the day. So there's, there's a, a belief, I mean, certainly it's a truth that at the beginning of the day in the market, uh, there's a lot of volatility, you know, the stocks surge up in price and then they come down or they go down in price and then they come up. Why? And this article says, why do they seem to make money overnight? And this is why. Um, and, and the gist of this article is that in the morning, when things open up at 9.30, there's nimble retail traders jumping in and out, buying and selling, but there's not a lot of uh, you know, volume as far as how much inventory of stock there is to trade. So that means if only five people are buying and five people are selling, things can jump all over the place as opposed to when there's a thousand people buying and a thousand people selling. And what happens is the, the nimble retail traders are in and out, moving around early morning before the big guys come in, the big fish. 
Uh, and, and what happens is the big fish come in and they evaluate kind of like, is this real information or is this rumor? And then they make their decisions and they start selling or buying shares, which makes the market calm down and, and go there. And, and I shared this with a, a friend and, and his quote was, so the big fish always win. And, and I would say, well, the big fish are, are staying in the market. So the, those, big, those big retail companies, I mean, they're holding billions of dollars of shares and they're staying in the market all the time. I mean, they're, they're not making moves based on rumors, quick information. Certainly, they, and they're also paying to, uh, attention to earnings calls, listen, listening on, on that, doing a lot of research. So what he said, the big fish always win. And, and, I, and I thought about that and I said, and, and thank you, Ken, for sharing that is, uh, yeah, yeah, the big fish do always win. They, they, they do do the most research. <laughs> they listen, they put in the work. Uh, they have uh, powers of scale, so they do win. So what does that mean for us? Because I don't consider uh, myself a big fish. Here's the thing. If I want to swim against the big fish, I'm probably going to lose. But I do have the ability to swim with the big fish. So I may be riding their wake. We may be as a team, you know, uh, partnering with them and being part of it. Like we want to be with the big fish because the big fish you know, J.P. Morgan Chase, Goldman Sachs, Charles Schwab. I mean, the big fish are going to win. They, they, they will. They'll figure it out uh, in, in the stock market. So how do we do that is we get involved with stocks that they're in, ETFs that they're in, but we're also nimble. So we, we get that ability that we're, we're nimble enough that we can be, you know, buy a position quickly at 931 when the market opens for our clients. We, we can do some things, but... Generally, we're staying with the big fish. We're, we're, you know, I would never short the market. I mean, I'm not, uh, you know, even if they came out and said, hey, we should short the market, I'd be like, that's, that's crazy because over 50 years it goes up. So let's ride with the big fish. So I hope that helps. Maybe you understand that. And then if you were hanging on to the end because you're like, I love Shine and Timu, whatever, the, and I have not ordered anything, but my kids have. Um, here's the gist. The prices that you pay could go up by as much as 20% if the Biden administration closes this de minimis loophole. And so what that loophole is, is that things that are imported packages under $800, they avoid import duties, tariffs, things like that. So, so when you buy that little package of t-shirts, or I don't even know what all my kids buy, when you buy those things, you don't pay any duties or tax on it. So these two companies, and I'm sure there's others, have made their, their money on avoiding this. You know, if they did a big shipment, they would have to pay tariffs. But with this, they do not. So what they're talking about is let's close that loophole and collect the, the taxes on it. And then, you know, of course, these companies are not going to eat that. And, you know, you, the consumer, we, the consumer, are going to pay that in our prices. So... Thought that was interesting. I, I wasn't aware that was happening. I wasn't aware that they were avoiding that like that. So anyways, that's it for this week. Have a great weekend. Bye.